Okay, we're going to continue with our array algorithms, and we're going to look at a, how we search an unsorted array. That's really important because there's a really much better way to sort an array when we know it's sorted. So when we have an array where we don't know if it's sorted or not, or if it's not sorted, then we have to use this approach, which is called a linear scan or a linear search. And later on, you'll see that this also kind of equates to the idea of a brute force algorithm. So basically, we're going to start at the beginning of the array and check each element in the array as we go through it to see if it's the element that we're looking for. Okay. So I've already got this set up in NetBeans. I created a, a new project. And I just saved the old project, so I have my random integer array that has 500 elements. So if we come down here, uh, here's where I initialize the array. And each element has a value uh, that's random from uh, 1 to 1,000. And uh, we used this before. Uh, here's the code again that I used to display the array. And that's just so we can kind of visually inspect I threw this in here to put a space in there so that the uh, output wouldn't uh, run into that. I started to set up a couple values to look for, and I said, what the hell, just do one, because um, we can keep rerunning the array until we get our results. So we're going to look for the value 69 in the array. And then here's the code that uh, actually does the search. So we're going to start with the first element of the random array and run through the entire array length. And uh, basically, at each element, we look to see if it's equal to the val to find that we're looking for, which is 69. And then uh, if it is, we'll go ahead and print out that to the user and set the found flag to true. And then if it's not, when we get down here at the end, if not found flag, then we'll print the message saying, hey, we didn't find it. Okay. And notice I've made the messages kind of uh, full featured. So it actually tells you what the value is you were looking for. And let's scroll this over. It shows you where it was in the array. So locus is a Latin word that means place or position. And so here, this is the index. So this is going to say, hey, I found the value 69 at location x, whatever it is. And then this will simply say, hey, I didn't find 69 in the array. So the linear scan is actually pretty simple. And it's not really that different than the max or the min. You just have to deal with the uh, issue of when you don't find it. And that's what the found flag does. Now there are some variations on this. And I believe Kay Horseman, our textbook author, has these in the big Java textbook. So for instance, this is looking for a value and it tells you where it found the value. You can write this up as a Boolean method that just says yes or no if it's in there and doesn't indicate the location. Okay, So that's a little different. Um, all right, well, let's run this and see what we get. So we're looking for 69, not found. There's the array. And this time we found it at location 167. Uh, let's see, divide by 20. That should be in about the eighth row, right? So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And uh, let's see, do you see the 167 here? It should be in one of these locations. Uh, I mean the 69. There it is right there. All right, so 69. So there you go. Uh, we have both cases where it was in the array or was it wasn't. And um, I think that should satisfy you that this works. Uh, let's see. Uh, four minutes. It's not very long. I was going to just show you the binary search in a different. Yeah, I'm. I'm still going to use a different uh, uh, program for that. Uh, let me show you something else here. So, if you think about it, as soon as I found this, it's uh, really going to continue to search through the array, even though I'm actually done. 
And so another alternative here is to use a statement that we haven't seen, which is called break. And when you break out of the loop, what it does is it prematurely exits the loop. So normally this for loop is going to run through the entire array. But if you do the break, it will go ahead and jump to the code after the for loop and continue to execute. So this is a way to make the uh, search a little more efficient. And so uh, it shouldn't change what we look at. We won't be able to tell. Um, you know, this is going through, you know, we're talking milliseconds. So it doesn't really even show the difference. This time it didn't find it. Let's run it again. Still not found. And this time I found it location 336. Okay. So uh, what that is, is that's kind of a short circuit that says, hey, we're done and we break out of that. Now, um, you understand now how to do methods. So if I was to put the search in a method, instead of break, I would probably use return. I would just return from that point, and that would uh, short circuit the, uh, the loop. It wouldn't continue to loop. It would just uh, exit out of the loop and the method and return the value that was found. So uh, that just makes it a little more efficiency. Uh, efficient. Okay, uh, since I have some time, I'm going to talk for a few minutes here. It's useful for us when we do these kinds of algorithms to think about um, how long it's going to take to do them. And we usually uh, construct that into a, an idea called worst case and best case. So when you're doing a linear search, the best case is that what you're looking for is in the first element, right? And then you can see that I would only search the first element and I break out of the search and be done. The worst case would be either it's not there at all, so I have to search the entire array, or very similar, it's in the very last position of the array. So I search through the entire array and I find it in the last position. The average case is going to be right in the middle of that. And this is pretty easy probability. So basically, if I have an array of length n, the average case to find an element in the array is going to be n over 2. And in this case, I have 500 elements, so that means I'm going to look about 250 times on average. When we look at the binary search, which takes advantage of the fact that the data is sorted, we get a much better efficiency. Okay, So um, I could probably crank this up. And uh, let's just do that and see what happens here. So uh, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make this 50,000. And uh, hopefully I'm not going to run out of memory here. So it takes a minute and uh, it found it, right? And that time it took one second to run, okay? And uh, let's try a little experiment. Let's go ahead and eliminate the break so that it actually runs through the entire array each time, right? Okay, so we'll run this. And, uh, whoa, how come it printed? Oh, you know what's going on now? Because it's not breaking out, it's telling me every location that it found 69 at. Um, yeah, that's pretty funny. It only took, it still took zero seconds. So it's actually not, uh, there's not a large enough data set here to even really read the time. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so you know what? Uh, actually, I just realized that uh, there was an aspect of the code that I didn't quite get and I didn't explain properly. Because I've written this, it actually finds if this break is not in here, it goes ahead and it will trigger the if for every time it finds the value we're looking for. And when I put the break, it jumps out after it finds the first one. So if you think about it, that's a different kind of search. It's different to say, let me find the first instance of this number than to say, let me find every instance of this number. And so if I'm only looking for the first instance, the break is a good thing to do. 
But if I really want to find every instance, then I don't want to use the break. The found flag does the same thing either way. It simply indicates uh, whether or not, when we didn't find it. And of course, if we broke out, it was because we did find it. So the found flag won't be true and it won't register. So uh, I'm glad I kind of noticed that. You know, I had sort of overlooked that part of the code. And so again, it's kind of a different search if you're looking for every instance. Um, you know what? Uh, I still got a little time here, so let's just see what happens when we keep increasing this. So we'll add one more zero there, and uh, that's 500,000 data points. And notice now it takes a minute to display them. It actually takes longer to do displays, and so it took five seconds to run, okay? And again, it's finding each one. So it's going through the entire array. Um, just so we're clear, it doesn't, it doesn't really take five seconds for it to run through the array. What takes a long time is the input and the output. So when it's writing to the screen, that's actually the slowest thing. The stuff going on inside the computer is really a lot faster than any kind of output. All right. So uh, this is starting to get kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and re-enable our break and see if we can get a variable amount of time because now we have a big enough array where we might be able to tell how long it takes to search. Okay. So again, it's going to print the array out every time. It found it at 2.30. That took four seconds. That took three seconds and it found it at uh, 1786. We'd have to run this many, many times to get like really statistical things. Uh, and again, the really long part is printing the array. So let's do this. I'll disable the printing of the array and we'll see if we can notice uh, any difference in the times uh, when it finds the number at the beginning or at the end. Okay. So where the hell is that code to display the array? Let's see, here we go. So, uh, oh, and by the way, you see how by using the length I saved that? I can change the, the, the size of the array and all the code runs instead of me searching through here and trying to find where I put the uh, size and I hard coded it as a magic number in there, right? So um, let's go ahead and I'll show you NetBeans thing too. Um, where is that? Uh, let's see. Comments. Debug format refactor insert code. Uh, I can't remember. There's there's a way in NetBeans where I can comment the code without having to do it by hand. Uh, let's see. Format no. Ah, uh, well, I'll have to find it some other time. Okay, so I'll just put a block comment in here. Slash star. And then I'll put an extra line in there. Star slash. Whoops. Got an eight instead of a star. Okay, there we go. So now we're not going to be printing that huge array out. Uh, let's run this a few times. So found 69 at Locus uh, 1115. Zero seconds. Zero seconds. Yeah, see, it's going to always be zero seconds because it's really not even straining to do this. All right. Well, you know what that means. Now I'm probably going to run out of memory here. <laughs> but let's have some fun. Wow. So that's 5 million integers, right? Did I count my zeros right? Pretty sure I did. That might take some time to print out that many. So let's see. We've got, yeah, there it is, 5 million. Um, okay, let's, uh, what the hell. We'll double that. Eventually, I'm going to run out of memory. Wow.
And by the way, with that many data points, I'm almost sure to have a 69 in there. Okay. All right. Um, well, I think that's enough. We played around a little bit. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I don't, I don't know what... Because this actually represents a huge amount of memory here. Uh, each one of those integers takes up four bytes. So that's uh, uh, 40 million bytes. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I guess that's not barely even a gig. Well, what the hell. <laughs> Oops, uh, we ran out of space. Okay, so I figured that would happen eventually. Uh, let's go on back and uh, take one out. We'll try it one more time. Oh, okay, so now we're getting some time here. So it actually took two seconds to find that. Um, and is this the one with the break in it? Did we take the break out? Yeah, no, we didn't. So that's interesting. So you would think that it wouldn't take two seconds to find it at location 817, right? Because before it didn't. There must be some overhead in using an array that big. Uh, let's do it a few more times. So one second to find it at 165. One second. What's happening there is uh, it's it's not because it finds it soon enough. It's really not any different than what we had before. Uh, okay, well we can make it really interesting. So now it'll take a long time just to print out how many times it found it. Isn't that cool? So nine seconds, uh, I should put a counter in there to tell it how many times it found the value too. Okay, uh, Tom's having fun playing around. He's a little slap happy here. So uh, again, I hope you're getting a lot out of these videos. I'm enjoying making them. And uh, you know what I always say, code on, dude.